Come here. <laughs> Who left you out in the rain? an emotional support dog when you could have that emotional support child. I need that child on my shoulder just saying, you're so nice. I'm so proud of you. All the leaves are brown and the sky is gray today, guys. Jesus is my rock, that's how I roll. Welcome to another episode of California Preaching. My neighbor gave me toffee and I love my neighbor because this is my favorite food. Oh my gosh. Get Jesus on the phone right now. Direct line, please. Emergency breakthrough. There's really no other way to say it. If you want the Jesus vibe, you gotta subscribe. You gotta push that little bell and get the notifications so that you get every single cow preach. I have a little bit of a praise report. PTL, I actually woke up with a little bit of less dread in my head in bed. I'm really, grateful to God for that because the dread in my head in bed is awful. And I was getting really sick of embracing the suck of that. It's not a great way to wake up. I had this thought, God is going to replace what the locust has eaten. I actually thought of that. Now, that is not something I thought of, that is scripture. Now, locusts are some nasty, nasty buggers. And when they swoop in, they eat everything. They take everything. You know, there, there are no prisoners. There's no leftovers, they don't get to-go bags. And that's basically what I've been feeling like for the past couple of years. I mean, let's just call a spade a spade. I've had depression, I've had anxiety, I've had loss, I've had grief, PTSD, whatever. We're not gonna get into the whole list. It's long, it's a snoozer, we all have it. This is not something new, um, I'm not unique, it's just my reality. And when I'm granted the grace to be able to recognize that I have situations and not problems, which is what I normally think I have. I think it's a problem, but when I break it down and unpack it, I realize, oh, this is actually just a situation that can get resolved and it's not a problem. I just get into such a mental fog that sometimes it's really hard for me to decipher what's a problem and what's a situation. Grace, 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 grace. I definitely have a huge uh, lack of that word in my life. I don't give myself enough grace. I pray to the Lord that I can give myself more and more and more grace as I get, you know, older and more mature and I stop being like a sippy cup, you know, saint and I start really maturing in the Lord and realizing that I'm just a child of God and I'm on this planet doing the very best I can. I can forward all my issues to heaven. That's what faith is. F-A-I-T-H, forwarding all issues to heaven. This morning I was sitting at breakfast with my family. Everybody's in town. It's awesome. And I started, my heart started racing and I started having some panic and I started having some anxiety. Now this is just free floating, you guys. It's not like something triggered it. It's just this awful free floating anxiety that I get from time to time. I was like, mm, yeah, you were not invited. No, it was crazy. I just started saying China. I love you. And it was so amazing how much that calmed me down. Have you ever told yourself that you love yourself? Try it. I'm telling you right now, like holy breakthrough. Just to say, China, I love you was monumental in that moment. It was just as if God was putting his arms around me. But it was me saying it to myself, but yet it felt like God saying it to me. Comprende a little bit here? I don't know, it was really fascinating. I'm so over the dark night of the soul, and I've had the dark night of the soul going on for several years, several years. Um, I have a holy note for you guys here. My holy note's printed on picture paper, like photograph paper, <laughs> so it's like teeny. So here we go, okay. Dark night of the soul, uh, a period of spiritual desolation and suffering in which all sense of consolation and comfort is removed. Oof. Okay, that is definitely what I have been suffering from. I have had the dark night of the soul. Yeah, I am 
finished with the Dark Knight of the Soul movie playing in my life. I am just done with it because I'm ready for a PG life. You know, that's a rated R graphic dark movie that I've been playing in my head. I want the praise and gratitude, PG. I want the PG movie in my head. You know what I'm saying, guys? Can I get a hallelujah? Grace, grace, grace. There's no such thing as a grace graduate. You know what I mean? None of us graduate from grace. It is like a daily dose of grace that we need to give ourselves. And we need to pray and ask the Father to give us that grace every single day. Please, God, Lord, I pray for all the Bible babes, everyone watching this right now, pour your grace, God's riches at Christ's expense. That's what grace truly is. Because of you, Lord, we can experience grace in our lives. Lord, I give myself grace today. I ask that you'll give yourself grace today. Yeah, so I pray that we can all just stay in the school of grace, just stay in that class. <laughs> I seem to forget about grace constantly, all the time. It's like I get amnesia, grace amnesia. Knowing that I can't control my children, I can't control their lives and their decisions. I can help pave the way, I can help carve the road, you know, whatever, but I cannot ultimately make my children's decisions for them. I'd love to. If I could be perpetually Velcroed to my children, I would be ecstatic. Like, that would be amazing. But they need to grow and learn and fall on their face and make bad decisions. That's their prerogative and I have to give them the grace to be able to make their own mistakes in life. But that takes radical surrender and vital faith. Vital, vital faith. When I learned about radical surrender, that was huge for me because I didn't understand that that was even possible. I didn't understand that I could surrender. I didn't understand the prayer God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things that I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. That prayer, which is said a lot in 12-step meetings, really has helped me to understand that radical surrender is, even if you know we think our children don't have God, there is an all loving God that has a purpose and a plan for our children. And if I start getting into, will all my kids get saved? And will Billy ever come to salvation? Will, oh, I don't know. It takes radical surrender. So if I'm truly in a life partnership with Jesus and he is my cosmic husband, then I need to trust that when I have radical faith and radical surrender, that he's gonna do Otherwise, his part. I'm gonna go cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. I really am. I can drive myself absolutely crazy with my thoughts, crazy. All day long, I have to be like, how can I get Jesus into this conversation that's happening between my ears? He's made us some promises, you guys. He's gonna stay faithful to his promises, but he's also gonna stay faithful to his threats. <laughs> you know, that's a scary prospect, but it's so true. As much as people don't wanna hear it, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and nobody gets to the Father except through him. Moods change. Truth doesn't. Here's a holy note that might rock your world. Um, this is a scripture I haven't heard that often. It's Corinthians 1, 15, 49. And it says, and as we have been born the image of the man of dust, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly man. So when I unpack that, I read that, yes, we are at flesh and bone right now, and we are going to die, and we are going to turn to dust, right? As we have been born into that man, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly man. So we've borne the image of the dust man, but I'm also going to bear the image of the heavenly woman man. I am going to bear that image. That is a promise. That is his word. Whew. It's getting hot in here. I mean, it's the ultimate too good to be true, right? It just sounds really, this is for real, this is true, this is truth. Jesus has already done the work. So, I mean, there's no such thing as time, really. Time is something we've kind of created. This is a really random question, but does anybody know where birds die? I'd really like to know. I've seen them flying my whole life in the sky. I've never really seen like dead birds everywhere. I mean, do they just find an ocean and 
die over the ocean? I really, I really would love to know. Billy's been having a real tough time getting back on the time zone. Uh, I tried to get, I tried to squeeze a chili out of him today, but he was just like, keep dreaming. It's not gonna happen today. So I'm really sorry about that Bible babes, but chili is on the way. Big, big bowl of spicy chili is coming your way. That's all of the holy notes I have for today. I wish I had more. Um, I only had a couple today, but um, yeah, God's problem child. Check it out. Keep putting the fun and dysfunction. Peace of Christ. Hey you guys, if this video blessed you in any way, I pray that you will subscribe. And I also pray that you'll press that little button next to the subscribe because that is an alert button and it will give you a notification every single time there's a brand new Cal Preach. And of course, share because sharing is caring and you just never know who's gonna find the peace of Christ. Amen.